welcome back to Want to Collect with me, Jace. And today I'm going to be doing the review on this somewhat incredible piece by Weta Workshop. The Escape Off the Road 500 edition size with a price tag of just over £1,700. So let's start there. The price. Is it worth just over £1,700? I've been giving this quite a bit of thought. And... I've got to say, I'm going to start off by saying, this is the best piece in my collection. It's beat him. It, it's... If ever you get the chance to see this and you haven't got it, go and see it. <clears throat> it really is... I know it's a bit of a cliche when people say photographs don't do it justice. We've all seen that a hundred times on a hundred different pieces, but this really doesn't. I was looking at the photographs I took and the footage I took. It doesn't anywhere near get across how good this is. The quality of this, the detail, <coughs> excuse me, it, it's just everywhere you look, it's, there's every bit of attention to detail, which I'm going to go through with you. So it's a difficult question to answer. If I saw this and they offered me the price tag, would I still pay it? Well, of course I would. I paid it without having seen it up front. And it's really, I, I'm really struggling to say that this is I think this is overpriced I mean the sensible side of me wants to say yeah I think this is probably three four hundred pound overpriced but then when I look at it and I think it's the best piece in my collection that that sort of justifies having the best price tag in my mind and okay I mean I suppose really yeah maybe maybe a couple hundred pound overpriced you know fifteen hundred pound would have been a uh, You'd have been thinking you've got to, you know, that's a really, really good price. Uh, mine has arrived with no flaws or faults, nothing, no breakages. I had a bit of an issue at the time with getting the horse on properly. It is now sort of in place. I've had to sort of wiggle and jiggle it, but it, it is in place. It doesn't quite, it doesn't quite sit exact i'll show you when i bring the camera around the back you can see for yourself but and there is a tiny tiny little gap there is a tiny little gap on the back feet there so that that would be my only fault with this that i've seen is that my, my horse doesn't sit quite 100 percent perfect and i suppose the, the other things that people have raised will discuss as we go around it but from what I've seen on mine, if, if I had to pick a fault with it, any flaws with it, it would just be that the, the horse doesn't sit 100% where it's supposed to. It is, mine is slightly marginally out. So what I'm going to do, because I'm going to do a bit of a close-up on these, and then I'm going to go a close-up on this for you all. So I'm going to be going handheld. So I'm hoping that it's not going to be too shaky of footage and that it's not going to go out of focus i'm going to really sort of try and do that so just bear with me on this guys uh, i want to get in as as close as i can to this for you all so you can all have a have a much better look at it because yeah it's 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 incredible it really is right should we crack on okay i just wanted to start off with a closer look at the certificate of authentic authenticity <laughs> that you get with this, with uh, actual signatures. That, those, that's not like photocopied on or anything. Though. Those are the actual signatures of the of the sculptors, which is Bridget Wust is that, and Gary Hunt, and then the co-founder, Sir Richard Taylor, all of which have individually signed that. As you can see, mine is the edition number of 223 of 500. So it's a nice little, a nice little extra there. And along with this, you also get this very high quality print which is is lovely unfortunately i don't think i'm gonna i don't think i'm gonna frame and hang this i'm gonna keep this all neat and tidy in the wallet that it it came in i think and but it, it's just a lovely little extra to have okay so i'm gonna start off with the four hobbits which i mean i think for the scale that these are that these these are really good likenesses the sculpts good 
the paintwork on them is really good. Uh, what really stood out was the, the work that gone on to Sam's, Sam's jacket. I mean, even his backpack, which you can't really see that well. I mean, it's all, all the details there. Uh, Frodo obviously holding the ring, uh, the detail on the feet. You know, they've got mud up their feet and on their legs. And there's even, I'm hoping you can see this, they've made the ground look wet. And can you see the worms? Can you see all the worms there by Frodo's feet coming out of the ground? Because he was the one holding the ring. I mean, even that broken carrot, look at that. I mean, the toenails and everything, the detail on these is just, this is the thing, the detail is just exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. And as I move up, I think it's here somewhere. Yes, there, can you see it? They've even got the centipede coming out of the tree, look. So yeah, you know, it's, it, I don't know how well it's coming out, but all this mud here is made to look, look wet. And the sculpting is phenomenal. The paintwork is done superbly um, even on you see on Mary there look can you see the, the spider coming over onto his shoulder and he's looking at it I mean it's just I don't know how good that's focusing on there just incredible detail incredible detail and then we get the Nazgul himself which again He's done superbly. People are saying about, you know, can he see the feet? And there was a bit of a discussion going on the unboxing about that they were more aware of the presence of the ring as opposed to actually being able to physically see, which was probably why when Mary threw the bag, it knew the ring was somewhere close, but Frodo didn't actually put the ring on. And that was why the noise of the bag distracted him briefly enough so they could make their escape. So. But again, it, it's you know it's such a trivial thing to be to be concerning yourself with. It doesn't matter. It gives the it gives the effect it needs to do. And I've discussed sort of Nazgul's on other videos. Again, it's you know it's it's just done superbly well. The effects on the tree roots and everything is is brilliant. And the rock. I'll take you round the back now. We'll have a look at the Nazgul from the from the rear. I apologise if the light's not quite so good this side. I mean they've got the sole of his boots there look with the the armour hanging over it and then all the muck and dirt on the cape and actually you've got the road itself with all the mushrooms and leaf litter so you've got this is actually like the concrete road here which goes all the way along there and then they've instead of just leaving it boring they've done what would be underground all the tree roots and everything that was actually under the road and over here you've got the rabbit hiding in his hole his warren is it warren the rabbit i mean this i mean look at this detail it is it's just incredible and then we get onto the horse himself who has got varying wounds and mud splatters on his, on his legs and going up onto his belly as well. More wounding there from being forced to, to run so hard. I mean, the leather look on the on the saddle is, is just exceptionally good. And all of this detail on, I mean, even on the stirrups look, you've got that leaf-like pattern that they had on their armor. I'll go around the other side to get his, the head in, I just wanted to show. I've got my light placed in the stupidest place. So. I'm going up to the hindquarters there as well. And here we are looking at the sort of the back side area of the horse going up into the tree stump itself. I have to say that the the detail on that horse 
is just exceptional. I mean, it is exceptional. Even the saddle, the, the leather look with the creases in the saddle. I hope that's coming out okay, guys. It's just mind blowing. I, I mean, this is, I just don't, there is just so much detail on this. There is just, I mean, they've even got like the wet, damp look inside the knot, the, the hole in the tree there, the moss and everything growing on it. There's just nowhere where they have ignored attention to detail. It really is just a sublime piece. It's just incredible. I've just come briefly back to the rear of the statue here just to show you the, the sort of, that you can see where the feet should go. And I don't know if that's coming out or not, but there is a a slight slight gap there see, see it's very easy you can you can sort of maneuver it around very very easy but there's there's a minor minor little gap on mine nothing much but i say you you wiggle it around a bit and everything and you can sort of get it to to line up there's just one pin on this foot here which holds it in sorry about that it's just it's not very easy to sort of talk and look at what you do at the same time. So yeah, that that was really my only negative thing I could find with it was was the horse just wasn't quite placed perfect. But in all fairness, I've just jiggled it then and it's it's actually put it in really good position. Um, but yeah, I mean I'm being really really picky, really picky by saying that you know it's there's a little bit of a gap there, but uh, you know. It's sort of the same with that one there. Tiny, tiniest little bit. I mean, that is. I mean, that's being super picky, which I'm like. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm just trying to not sound like I'm really kissing the arse of this piece. I wanted to, you know, try and tell you if there were any issues, what they were. But I mean, so there we have it. The my review of this of this piece you know like i say even the, the the one little tiny minute little gripe about the the feet on the horse which with a little bit of with a little bit of jiggling around it, it's pretty much there in fact when i just pushed it then before it's actually put it pretty much bang in position this this foot here is not quite where it should be but i say that's such a minor thing i just didn't want to sit here and just not have an issue because there's, there's always been issues with it I'm, I'm struggling i'm really honestly guys i'm struggling to find anything negative with this the price yeah you know it's a heavy price it's for this piece but nowadays we expect it you know i'll be interested when the one third scale predator gets here i think i might be able to sort of because i always when it comes to prices i always compare things with what I've already got and what I've already paid. I find that's in a better way for me to do it. When something comes out and they put a price tag on it, I don't tend to sit there like a lot of people do, whinging and complaining about the price. I sit there and tell myself, well, you know, I, I don't I don't need it. So the spending of the money is irrelevant. I'm either going to be prepared to spend that money or I'm not. Because it's a non-essential item. They don't need it. So again, it goes back to what I've said before about, you know, all these things are choices. So I'm not going to sit around and bitch and whinge about the price. When this came out with a 1700 price tag on it, I, I just thought, well, if I go for this, it'll be the most expensive piece I've ever owned. And it is at the moment. It will only be beaten by the third scale predator. So when that arrives and because that is going to be what another four or five hundred quid on top of what this cost me. So, you know, We'll see. But for me, you know, maybe, maybe slightly overpriced. Maybe. I I honestly I honestly don't feel that it is. I, I don't feel that it is. Because you know, it's just I'm just so overwhelmed by it. This this is something that I I'll never get rid of. And I think this is going to be extremely sought after as well. I think we've got another potential tree bid hit piece here where the second hand price on it is, is just through the roof. And I say I've been very fortunate, there's no broken pieces, no marks, no scuffs. 
Um, I think it's brilliant how the fact that it, it comes in so fewer pieces, such a huge piece like this, and you know the horse is in two piece. Uh, then the, just the one hand on the Nazgul and then just a few bits of foliage at the front and that's it. It was such a fantastically engineered diorama and yeah, brilliant and brilliantly packaged as well, all in one box and superb. And you know, the little extras that they give you, it's always a nice touch. It shows that they, they think and they, they care and even the stuff that's wrapped in like the cloth I think is always better than the paper which rips and you can never sort of get it back back round properly if ever you come to package it back up again and um, you know it's just little things like that that you can see where you've spent your money I can anyway I, I like that attention to detail I like that extra little bit of care and it's the one sort of gripe I always have with Prime One that they you know, you look at some of the other companies where they have the straps around the polystyrene packaging, which I always think looks so, so, so much better. And like with this piece, you know, they've wrapped it in cloth. It's like you've spent a lot of money. This is a pristine piece. It's going to look pristine the second that you open the box. And I like that. I like things like that. And I appreciate things like that. And it's why before this piece arrived and I was sort of running through my head sort of things that I might discuss and talk about. The forefront of my mind was discuss the price because you know it is very expensive but now i say that that's the issue i've got now it's here i i don't have a issue with that price i'm being honest i just don't have an issue with it i you know i'm i'm sort of saying it's maybe it's a couple of hundred pound overpriced but it does i'm not bothered about the price tag now i know i've got it it's wow wow and i say that it, Every last little bit of, I'll tell you now, it's, it's put that Prime 1 Gandalf and Balrog to shame a little bit because the one gripe I had about that was the, the sort of monotone paint job on it. It's pretty much all just black with a little bit of, tiny bit of silver paint on some of the armour and, you know, obviously the red of the flames. But this... I mean, the plants have got three or four colours. You know, the, the brown on the stems there, the, the leaves, the, every single leaf has been, it's got dark black colouring on it and, and like ochres and browns and, and reds. Every single leaf, the mushrooms, the same. They've got like where dirt settled on the cap and it's incredible. I look like I'm staring up a horse's ass here. I'm not. <laughs> Um, you know, it's, and even like the rabbit under there and, and the spider on Mary's shoulder and, and the centipede coming out, even the worms, they're not just painted one colour. There's this shading on everything and detail on every last square cent millimetre on this piece. There is nowhere where they have skimped on sculpting or paintwork detail attention to detail there's nothing there's nothing that i can see that i can fault this with nothing so for me this is a 10 out of 10 this is a 10 out of 10 i never thought i'd because i am so critical i never thought i'd ever give a a statue a hundred percent mark but this this has got it no breakages no damages no flaws i say this this thing with the horse at the back it is so microscopic it isn't i can't even call it an issue and i say just jiggling it then when i was doing the camera work i seem to have got it back in place so um yeah there's there's just nothing i know people were saying about the the sculpts face the face sculpts on the hobbits it's like gee what why do people get so anal about these things i mean it's quarter scale and these are hobbits so they're even smaller and it looks they look absolutely fine they've got facial expressions it captures that moment of the film perfectly i've just got zero issue with this i've got zero issue with this guys and i'm sure the other 499 people who have got this i i would say they're feeling exactly the same way yeah anyway I'm going to flip the turntable on for you again to give you a final little spin of this. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope I've 
covered everything really i'm i'm a little bit impatient when it comes to reviews you might know i sort of whiz around it quite quickly i don't i'm always accused of rabbiting on too much as any of you have been on my channel for a while now will know that's something that I, I do very easily so i try to keep these short and sweet as best as i can so i hope I've covered that all for you. Anything that you want maybe me to go over again or put some closer images on or discuss, just stick it in the comments, please, guys, and I'll, I'll address it, I assure you. And, yeah, um, if you've enjoyed this, give, give the video a like for me, please. I'd really appreciate that. And, of course, uh, anyone who's watching this video, if you haven't subscribed, please consider giving the channel a subscribe because it, it really, really helps. And, yeah. I'm going to leave you with this and I'll catch you all on the next video. I've got the review to do on Bilbo and Bag End. And not to mention, there's a couple of, as of filming this, I've got a couple of other videos I need to do as well. So, okay, I'm going to leave you all with Escape Off the Road by Workshop. Take care of yourselves. Ta ra. Mm -hmm.